Hello, 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 and welcome to Prog Review 73. And for some of you, you're going to be raising your hands in joy. Huzzah! Yes, because I'm turning my attention to Rush Sector 3 box set. And the first one up is the one with the dog on the cover, Signals. Now I've got to do the uh, thumbnail picture. That should be enough. So it's 1982. God oh, blimey, I was 11 years old. And I begin my journey, as I said, back into the Sector 3 box set. Um, well, from the opening track, Subdivisions, it's evident that it's, um, in terms of technology, the band have you know, fully embraced the synthesizer and the opening song is a work about alienation about fitting in a bit like being a prog fan really and about falling into your own subdivision and you know it doesn't really sound like any previous rush rush song that i've heard it's you know it's it's a nice little you know number little pop number um i've got to admit i quite enjoyed the song from a the nostalgic 1980s synthesizer aspect and you know it sounds big and cinematic with the addition of the of the extra instrumentation and um, it does satisfy me more than the guitar based material it scratches that itch if you will um, so anyway as I was looking at the album looking at the booklet looking at the lyrics I realised that this album might be about technology, you know, a little war against, you know, technology and man. And um, the second track, The Analog Kid, bears this out. So we're going to be, it's going to be like a pro versus con of technology and how man uses it. I guess that's the, the thrust of the album. And this Analog Kid song is a is a bit of a, you know, a soft, soft rocker, dominated by synths and, and it, it's a, Again, it's quite a decent piece of power pop. Um, this is followed by Chemistry, which opens with a big flourish, which is quite reminiscent of their earlier works, you know, from their earlier albums. Um, from what I've read of the lyrics, it, it, it deals with the fact that we are actually a you know, biomechanical machine, and without the electrochemical impulses between our ears, we'd be flopping around, you know. It's a bit of a plodder, and it doesn't really resolve itself very well. It just kind of disappears up its own fundament, and it's a bit of a shame, really, because it just, you know, I kind of like the idea, but it, it, for me, it didn't go anywhere. And then steps up Digital Man. Don't worry, he's not a new superhero who's been bitten by a radioactive digital watch. Oh, no. Though there was a comic book based on Digital Man and Analog Kid. Well, according to Wikipedia, anyway. Um, it's about again man's relationship to technology, and it's a, you know, a future shock by numbers, if you will. The cod reggae sections is subpar, and uh, you know they should really leave that kind of thing to the police because they can do, you know, reggae, you know, pop reggae without skipping a beat. They were good at it. Um, in fact, it does sound a little like walking on the moon at one point. <laughs> and then it drifts off into a squeaky fart of a guitar solo uh, with lots of washes of synth. And I admit, I lost interest. Oh dear. Um, the Weapon opens with some compelling syncopate, syncopated, make sure I've got the good teeth in, hi-hat, some synth and guitar, you know, it's all nice and syncopated and... Um, it's quite compelling. I quite enjoy it when the band does that kind of, you know, I kind of enjoy that thing. And it's actually part two of the Fear Quadrilogy. Oh, yeah. Because um, there are four songs about fear and they're all spread across the discography. I don't know why they did it. Try to be clever, I would imagine. Um, it's not as enjoyable as Witch Hunt, uh, though I like this solo. I thought the solo was okay. But overall, I felt that the song was too long, too repetitive, and I felt like I was actually being beaten over the head 
and by the weapon. You know, they kind of over over egg the pudding, if you will. And this is followed by New World Man, which again takes up the idea of progress, technology of mankind. As you can see, it's the theme running through the album. Uh, and you know, yeah, we get it. You know, we get it. I mean, Rush is never is a is a band that's all too keen to you know really hammer their point home. They're masters of subtlety, they are not. Um, thankfully, it's a it's a short tune. <laughs> I like the short ones, uh, and it does actually have a hook in it, and it's not spoilt by any awful guitar solo. So you know, kind of a thumbs up for that one. Um, then the pace is slowed down for losing it, which I thought was actually going to be about me listening to all of the Rush albums. Uh, uh, there's some excellent violin on this. I, I quite enjoyed the ethereal uh, violin work, and overall, this is probably the proggiest thing on this album. You know, it wasn't too bad. It, you know, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Trying to be kind, I'm trying to be kind here. But in terms of atmosphere, the final track, Countdown, not the final countdown, just Countdown. Would have been good if it was the final countdown, but it wasn't, it was Countdown. Certainly paints a vivid picture of the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia back in 1981. Uh, again, this is another man against technology piece. And, you know, it's a shame when you think about what actually happened to, you know, the Columbia. Um, and I actually, you know, I remember the launch vividly because uh, I was 10 years old and I was space crazy. I wanted to be an astronaut. And I actually took my pocket radio into school with my little earpiece with the intention of listening to the launch, but it kept being delayed. And I think I actually missed it in the end and ended up having to see it on the, on the, the tea time news. But there you go. Uh, so, you know, the album itself didn't leave any great impact on me. It's neither prog nor heavy rock. It's really kind of lightweight pop in places. Um, the Rush sound is, is softened in comparison to the previous albums I've listened to. And while the reliance on synthesizers gives the song extra depth and width and a you know, more cinematic feel, there was nothing on this record that hooked me. You know, it's not one I, I will be going back to. And so, with that in mind, I'm going to be giving this two fire hydrants out of five. Yes, that's two fire hydrants out of five. So there we have it. I'll be working my way through the box set, so, you know, pray, say a little prayer for me. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do what you've got to do. There's social media. There's a load of links in the, the old description box below. And... Um, not much else to say, really. My name's been Darren Lock. I've been burbling on about Signals by Canadian rock band Rush. Part of the Sectors Sector 3 box set with, with this little handsome devil on the spine. And you've been a wonderfully patient audience for tuning in and listening to me going on again and again and again and again. Only one more thing to say. Mark Lark.